And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Meadow from Rebel Games and designed by the same designers who designed Dream Home. Now, Meadow is a game in which you are building a tableau of cards in front of you, creating your own meadow. The thing that was first caught my attention on this is just the every card in this game is a different piece of artwork. It is this very peaceful theme of building a meadow, discovering different animals, species, uh, and plants, going around, seeing houses get built, uh, discovering you know some coins that you lost on the farm a long time ago, things like that. It's a very kind of zen type theme to it, but it's a game that uses a mechanism of placing tiles to draw cards to then play in front of you based on different symbols. Almost like an engine builder of sorts. Let me show you. beginning of the game, each player has five of these tokens, although you, this one here, which is kind of a wild token, is only used in two to three player games. And you'll also have three point tokens, two, three, and four of your player color. There are four decks of cards in this game, north, south, east, and west. At the beginning of the game, west has four cards randomly placed here, east four cards here, and south has the eight cards in the middle. The north deck is just set aside. Each player is going to be drafting a row of these cards, or randomly gets one east, one west, and one two south, and a north card as their opening hand. And then you're going to be playing a certain number of rounds based on the player count. So I'm showing here a four player board right now, so there's eight rounds. This piece keeps track of each round. One player goes first each round, and on a player's turn, they're going to be placing one of their tokens on the board. Now there are two different ways to place a token. One is for the top half, so you're going to ignore the bottom and just look at the number here. So you have numbers one through four. You'll place it in an open notch on the side of the board. You then will take the card that's that number away. So if I put this one here, I would take this card, which would immediately be replaced by the next card in the deck. This one here is a three, so if I place it at the bottom down here, I would count one, two, three, and take this card, which is again replaced from the deck. After you take a card, you also may play a card. So the number shows that I take card three, and then I may play a card. I can play the card I just took, or I can play a different card that's already in my hand. At the beginning of the game, each player has a ground card, and they can start with either side. Everyone has the same card, and you just pick which side you start with, as well as one road. When you take cards, and you play them in front of you, you're going to play them differently depending on what card you take. If you take a ground card, you'll just start a new area in your prairie. The ground cards are made up of different types, and you can have multiple of the same type, and you'll notice they also show various symbols at the top. You can have a maximum of 10 ground cards in front of each player. The other cards, and these are the main cards in the game, observation cards, are going to have requirements to them. A requirement might be, for example, this card here. This card is a tree, and the little icons here, it requires two types of land. I, do, I have both those types of land, so I can play this card, and I can play it on top of either one of them. So I'll play it here, like this, covering up the icon. So this shows a tree icon, well, so does the new card itself. So I would probably play it here, rather than getting rid of the frog icon. This is because lots of cards have requirements for icons. For example, this one here simply has a tree icon required. So I would place it on top of a tree icon, which is right here. If it shows multiple icons that it needs, for example, this one here needs a grub or it needs the, that type of land, I could place it on either. I have a grub and that type of land, but I could probably place it here. It's on that type of land. So it's up to me, and as you place cards, they're going to show symbols. Sometimes you have a card like this, which gives you two symbols. Sometimes you have a card that you can't play the symbols for. You just don't have the requirements. You're always allowed to discard two cards from your hand to the bottom of their respective decks to ignore one prerequisite symbol as you're placing the different cards out there. Another type of card you can get are landscape cards. To play a landscape, you need a road. 
I'll flip this over to show that it uses the road. Although some landscape cards need a road and certain types of terrain. These are not placed in your prairie, they're placed here up above your board like this, giving you amounts of points. And then you can find discoveries. A discovery needs a land, so I would just place it on top like this, so you can have one discovery per land. Although some discoveries may also have other prerequisites that are needed. Now you'll notice all these numbers and leaves, those are gonna be end game victory points. Another place you can play your tile is you can fit it in one of the notches here on the board, and the number of notches will be based on the number of players in the game. So what you, you then get to take an action based on that notch. For example, the one here lets you take any card on the board, but you then don't get to play one. The number two gives you two more road tokens, so you can put out more landscapes. The number three lets you draw three cards off the top of the deck that you want, keep one, discarding the other two. And number four lets you play two cards in front of yourself rather than just one, but you don't get to draw a card doing this. You also, if you have nothing to do with your actions, you can always place a tile on the bench here, which simply lets you play one card. Not a great option. At the beginning of the game, these tokens are going to be randomly placed on benches here. If, whenever you place a tile on one of these notches here, you have two adjacent symbols, let's say in front of me I have the mushroom and the flower, then you can place your lowest point token between those. So only one person can place it, but these are going to add to your points at the end of the game, and if you get them all out, that's a bonus of nine points that you'll get. And that's it. Once everyone has placed all their tiles, then the round is over, everyone gets their tiles back, and we move this worker one space. When the worker passes the hourglass in the middle, all the cards on the board are discarded, and you'll replace the south deck with the north deck. The north deck has cards that usually require more icons on them, but they also are worth victory points. The victory points go up to four, so you'll find more cards that are worth more victory points. After a certain number of rounds, for example, in a four-player game, it's eight rounds, and a three-player game, it's six rounds. Whoever has the most points is the winner. The game comes with a nice insert that holds everything, although I will say that if you carry it sideways at all, everything falls out of this insert. It just... I've tried to. I'm going to probably have to get rid of the insert. I do like these little card holders. You build them before your first game. They stay together pretty well. And it's just a nice way to have the cards pull out. The game also comes with some envelopes here. Now this is like, ooh, it's a legacy game. Not really. The rule book tells you, hey, open this envelope on Christmas Day. Open this one the first time you do whatever. And they just add a few more cards to the game. They're very, very, very minor rules additions. All my envelopes are empty. I just threw them in the game because they're that simple to add. Now, the artwork on the cards. Now, it's going to be a little busy on the main board, I think. Well, not I think, I know. But man, do I love this art. Every card has different artwork on it. It's just really well done. The symbology is pretty easy to understand. Like, this means either one of those things. Um, but we didn't have any problem at all understanding the symbols and everything like that. And man, it's just gorgeous how this game looks. All this beautiful artwork involved in the game is terrific. I really like the components of this game. The quality of the different tiles and tokens that are in the game. It's just fantastic all around. Sometimes a game just makes me almost inexplicably just happy to play it. And Meadow is 100% that type of game. I'm going to start by saying the only negative thing about this game is that I feel the four-player game of this is slightly too long. Eight rounds feels just a bit too long for the game. It feels like six rounds would be better, and I think the only reason there's eight rounds is because they wanted each player to be able to start twice. And I get that. But I still might play a variant where we just let the youngest player go first or something and they get to go for, you know, twice first or whatever because six rounds feels like it would be the perfect length for a four-player game. Other than that, I am thrilled with this game. First of all, the theming of this game is amazing. Now, we all want to see prairies and, and the animal environments and do well. And there could be games where you play about the environment that feel awfully preachy about such subject. This does so in a much more lighter tone. Hey, if I have 
this kind of animal and I put this out, it gets rid of this animal and that symbol is covered up by this one. It makes sense that the birds eat the bugs and then these get rid of the birds. And if I have houses, they cover up other objects and then therefore I can't play more cards. The thematic pacing of this game just is great. As you place these cards in front of you, you build this tableau. It makes sense that this birdhouse goes next to a house. It makes sense that the birds want to live in trees. It makes sense that the wolf hunts the rabbits. It's just fantastic. And yet, even though this theme is fantastic, the mechanisms of the game come together and marry this theme in just a wonderful way. First of all, placing those tiles out to grab cards from the grid, that's something I personally like. It's not the first time I've seen this. There's a fun game that I enjoy from Days of Wonder called Quadropolis that does a very similar thing. But whether you played that game or not, every time I play this, I think, man, everyone I've taught loves that mechanism. Put out the different uh, arrows and you take the card that far away. And there's only so many spaces at the beginning of the game. Those are the spots you hunt for, and the action spots are not used quite as much. And then near the end of the game, people want to take those action spots because the actions are useful and also because they want to put out those bonus point tokens in between the different symbols that are there. There's luck in the game as a, you know, what cards come through the deck, although you can dig through the decks with the number three action, which is draw three cards and keep one. I might be looking for a house symbol, and the back of the rule book shows you which symbols are in which decks. Yeah, that might be another minor negative. I wish they had that, what symbols are on which decks, a little reference card per player. That would have been probably nice. But man, it's a peaceful, fun game where even if you lose the game, you're going to look in front of you at the end and say, look what I built. This is my meadow. You know, look at all these cool things. And it's just satisfying. Discarding two cards to ignore a prerequisite for a card is a powerful thing to do. But at the beginning, you have five cards, and you're like, yeah, 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 I'll get rid of cards. But you run out of cards pretty quickly in this game. You want to maximize your actions. Whenever I take a card, I want to be able to play one. I don't have to, but why wouldn't I? And But you're going to get to points where you can't play cards because you just don't have the icons. Man, this is fantastic. I've taught this game to quite a few people already. It is easy to get to the table. It's easy to teach. It's easy to learn. It's a game that's light enough that it doesn't feel overbearing or rules heavy, but feels like it also offers really good strategic choices. This is one of the best games of 2021. It really is. It fits so many cool categories. It's the kind of game that I think everyone is going to be talking about at some point. I don't know that everyone's going to like it. I don't claim that about it most games. But this is definitely a game that I think when people play it, they're going to go, this is fantastic. It's not heavy, it's not uber light, it's kind of right there in the middle, but it's also the kind of game that I would play easily with people who don't play games because the simplicity and the theme helps teach the game. I love when a theme just naturally brings the game mechanisms into light for folks. And that's what this game does. And because every card is different, each game feels different. Yes. The cards are really only one to four points. Well, I guess the land cards are zero. So zero to four points. So there's not a huge disparity, and you're not like, ooh, this card's 30 points. There's none of that massive excitement of, look at this combo that I just blew everybody away with. But the better player wins. I've seen that. And ah, it just comes together in just a fantastic way. I'm really excited about this game. You know, there's a lot of games that come out over the course of a year, and I might really like them for personal reasons, or, you know, I'm not a big fan of them for whatever. This is a game that I like a lot, and I personally like the theme a lot, but I also see the potential of Meadow. I see the potential of Meadow to be kind of an award-winning game, like, like Wingspan, for example, but also a game that kind of bridges that gap. You don't know much about games, but you'll jump into this one and play it, but people who do like games will also enjoy it. Fantastic. Definitely worth trying out. Meadow. I'm Tom Vassell. You've been watching the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment. Excellent.